We lie all the time. And you lie, and I lie, and everybody lies. And if you tell me that you don't, you are lying as well. And the reason why is because we identify the word lie in a different way. A study by psychologist Robert Feldman of the University of Massachusetts found that 60% of people lie at least once in 10 minutes of conversation. On average, during this period of time, a person lies from two or three times. And what does he mean by saying that? Look, if somebody asks you, how are you doing? And you answer, great, wonderful. And you just had a car accident or you had a fight with your beloved one. You just simply don't want to share. So all you say is, wonderful, great. It's simple as it is. We are, as humans, lie and it's just wired in our brain. Why do people lie? Lies and deceptions may be used by an abusive person to cover their tracks, create an illusion, distract from reality, take themselves look good or someone else look bad, garner sympathy or advantage, alter another person's perception of the situation, or to give false imp impressions to the other people about themselves or someone else. Distortions of the truth may also be used as a source of fun. Some people enjoy the game of pulling the wool over the other people's eyes. Not telling the truth makes them feel powerful. We lie constantly and naturally, in small things, in big way, to strangers and close people when our safety depends on it and when there is no slightest sense in it. The human capacity to be dishonest is a fundamental as the need to trust others. A paradoxical as it sounds, we are often bad at recognizing lies. So how do we lie? There is no specific lie department in our head. Many parts of the brain are involved in this process. Studies using functional magnetic resonance imagine have shown involvement in lying and the prefrontal cortex, the area responsible for attention, planning, and decision-making, and the anterior cingulate cortex involved in reward, expectation, decision-making, managing impulsivity and some other areas. And when we tell the truth, it becomes much calmer because our limbic system is not stressed by lies and our frontal lobe doesn't interfere with the truth. Now, there are types of lies. Understanding the different types of lies can go a long way in recognizing the issues that the liar is going through, whether it be you or a friend. First, white lies. The white lie is often called uh, the least serious of all lies. People tell white lies calming to be tactful or polite. For example, it could be making up an excuse for not going to a party or showing appreciation for an uh, unwanted uh, gift thing. Oh, so please, thank you. I love it. I love this. Uh, what color is that? Um, whatever color that is, I love the scarf. It matches my eyes. Thank you. Or, oh no, no, your butt doesn't look big in these jeans. No, 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 you're fine. You're basically skinny. That is white lies because we don't want to hurt others. So we spare their feelings, their um, uh, emotions, and we go with this blunt lies just to protect people we care about. Or let's say some lies are actually needed in our life. For example, if the mother or a best friend of a bride, when she's picking the dress, the one dress, she comes out from the um, uh, fitting room and she's glowing. She found the one, that dress that she feels like a bride. She feels just like that dress belongs to the event and the mother or the friend uh, looking at her make these hideous faces and like oh 
could you try another one? That is wrong, because you're ruining not only the mood, you're ruining the entire picture of the process of the wedding. She already made a choice. She didn't even ask your opinion. She already go in with this dress. So instead of giving your opinion, just say something that might look like a lie, but it's necessary in specifically the situation. You can say something like, oh, how do you feel about it? And then you can feel, you can sense uh, that the bride actually made a choice. She feels wonderful in this dress and regardless how it looks objectively on her, it still doesn't that much matter comparing to the way that she made a choice and she feels wonderful in this dress. Next one is also very common for almost all of us is broken promises. Broken promises are a failure to keep one spoken commitment or promise. Broken promises can be especially damaging when the person who made the promise had no intention whatsoever of keeping their word to begin with. Uh, you could hear a lot or if you remember yourself in a school when uh, you didn't make a homework and you said, oh my dog, eat my notebook and um, that's why I didn't complete my homework and the same lies can go on and on in adult life when you hear ridiculous stories completely made up they don't sound absolutely realistic from people who didn't make their promises and uh, didn't stick to their word and um, they just uh, fantasize the next one is the lie of fabrication fabrication is telling others something you don't no, for sure, is true, but the person tries to convince you that it's actually true. Next one is the bold-faced lie. A bold-faced lie is telling somebody that everyone knows is a lie. It's simple and sometimes cute for a little child to tell a bold-faced lie about not eating any cookies even though there is a chocolate all over his or her face. The lying and exaggeration, it's one of the favorite of narcissists uh, or people with a low self-esteem uh, just to exaggerate usually and mixes truths and untruths to make themselves look impressive to others. Next one is compulsive lying. Compulsive lying is often caused by low self-esteem and a need for attention. In fact, the compulsive liar finds it all but impossible to stop. A compulsive liar tells their mistruths, even when telling the truth would be easier and better. Now, how can science detect lies? Many lies are tried and are told simply to keep the peace or to cheer someone up. But more dangerous lies, such as accusing someone, somebody of a crime or lying to investigators, have devastating consequences, not only for the deceived people, but also for the liar. What is also interesting is that people actually don't like lying. It makes us feel uncomfortable. Why does the brain care about honesty? As social animals, we value reputation. Our survival depends on whether the tribe accepts us. Consequently, most people work hard to maintain their image of reliable, um, per honest person with dignity. And being dishonest can cause reputational damage. When we lie, our breathing and heart rate increase, we sweat, our mouth dry out, and our voices may tremble. Hold on, give me a second. People vary in their ability to lie in part because of differences in the brain. To take an extreme example, sociopaths lack empathy and therefore do not exhibit the typical psychological response to lies. Liars can also pass a polygraph test if they are taught to remain calm during the test. Similarly, innocent people may fall a test simply because they fear that they will be hooked up to the machines and they look scary. For these reasons, the accuracy of the polygraph test is often disputed. As an alternative, it's proposed to use FMRI images, functional magnetic Resonance imaging is a type of MRI that is done to measure hemodynamic responses, changes in the blood flow caused by neuronal activity in the brain or spinal cord. This method is based on the fact that cerebral blood flow and neuronal activity are interconnected. A lot of research has been done on the health effects of pathological lying, and you know what? This may harm your health. According to Arthur Markman, the second you lie, 
your body releases cortisol. Just a few minutes later, your memory starts to overload, trying to remember both the lie and the truth. Decision making becomes more difficult and you may even project your discomfort as anger. All this in just the first 10 minutes. After this, initial reactions, you may worry about the lies, plausibility or about being caught in it. The attitude towards the person you have deceived may change to cope with these feelings. From a more an affectionate than usual attitude to anger, you will convince yourself that you lied because of the other person. A lot of mental energy goes into telling and supporting lies, which makes you anxious and, in some cases, even depressed. But that's not all. These feelings affect your digestion, causing sometimes even diarrhea, nausea, and cramps. A research project at the University of Notre Dame in Indiana studied the effect of pathological lying. The study involved 110 volunteers, and half of whom agreed stop lying, and half were not told to do anything specific. After 10 weeks, the group that lied less often had 54 fever mental complaints, such as stress or anxiety or headaches, or even problems with digestion system. Study. What is interesting is that people lie more often over the phone and less over the email. There is a defined relationship between the frequency of lies and the types of technologies, phone emails. Least of all people lied by email because they couldn't communicate synchronously and messages were recorded. Now, we are coming down to the most interesting topic, how to spot a liar. To finish it all up, it's very hard, really, for us to identify lies. Only less than 54% of people can identify a lie or a liar. Even though we all lie, isn't it too strange that we are not capable of identifying liars? And one of the reasons is because we used to deceive ourselves. We lie to ourselves absolutely beautifully because that is very convenient for us. That's why we don't acknowledge or don't notice red flags in other people. I'm gonna be truthful and I'm gonna tell you the truth. It was such a hard time for me to record this video. But I hope that you enjoyed it and that it was helpful for you to identify lies. And if you have any comments, please leave it there and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.